Hi everyone, my name is Godofredo Contreras and I'm the technical lead for Flutter Engineering Productivity. Today, I'll be presenting with Alexander Thomas, the technical lead for Dart Engineering Productivity. We'll talk about software supply chain security and how it's being used to, pre to prevent tampering of Dart and Flutter SDKs during the development, building, packaging, and distribution processes. Let's start with an informal definition. A software supply chain is anything that affects your software from development to execution. In this picture, we can see a common software supply chain. Its components are grouped into two different categories, resources represented in green and the processes acting on those resources represented in blue. Common resources include the source code, third-party dependencies, and the artifacts generated from building the source code. Common processes include building the source code, archiving the packages, and the execution of applications by final users. A software supply chain attack is when threat actors infiltrate a software company to use it as a de delivery channel of malicious code. Translated to the Flutter ecosystem, a software supply chain attack will happen if a threat actor compromises the Flutter SDK and use it to deliver malicious behavior. An attack to the Flutter supply chain will target developers using the Flutter SDK and the customers of their applications. And this is why the Dart and Flutter software supply chain security is a top priority for us. And at this point, you may be asking yourself, what could go wrong in the software supply chain? And why we need years of investment to protect it? Well, it turns out that attacks can happen at any link in between resources and processes of the software supply chain. Let's review eight potential threats, one for every resource, process, and their corresponding links. In the link between the developer and source code, a threat actor submits an authorized code by passing code review. In the source code resource, a threat actor can compromise the software and the source control management system and submit malicious code impersonating a trusted contributor. In the link between the source code and the build process, the source code can be modified to inject malicious code after a checkout from the source code control management system and before it is used to build the packages. In the build process, build parameters can be used to inject behavior or compromise the cache of the build machines with artifacts to inject bad behavior in subsequent builds. The use of compromised third-party dependencies is also a big threat. In the link from build process to the package resource, when a valid package is modified replacing the original artifact without a means to validate its integrity. In the package manager, a threat actor can get administrative access and modify the packages with malicious code. The last example in this is consumers getting tricked to use compromised packages by using package names that can be easily confused with the official ones. Protecting from many of these threats requires documenting the bills in a verifiable form, including when, where, and how the software was produced. This verifiable format is called provenance, and it is usually a JSON file to describe the machine used to build the packages, the start and end timestamps of the build, and the materials used during the builds. These are portions of the Dart provenance file, and we can see Lucy and Mac 114 as the machine used to build in the where section. We can see the start and end timestamps in the when section, and a list of packages and binaries in the how section. And now, when most of the applications are built with reusable components, we really need a common language to describe the security posture of the applications and the dependencies being introduced. This is the reason SALSA, the acronym for Supply Chain Levels for Software, was created as an industry collaboration. It provides a list of best practices and controls to understand third-party dependency security posture to improve development workflows, adding visibility and 
auditability of the source code generation, and improving the integrity of products, protecting the build workflows, attaching verifiable provenance of the different dependencies and the processes to produce the artifacts. Using this framework, we are not only improving the security posture of our SDKs, but we are also mapping those improvements to something the community knows and trusts. Salsa is organized in four different levels, providing increasing integrity warranties. Level one requires automated builds and the documentation of the build process using provenance. This level does not prevent tampering, but it helps with vulnerability management, and it helps the consumers of the packages to understand the risk they are taking by using it. Level two requires a source code version control and a build system that generates authenticated provenance. Level two provides tampering protection as long as the build service is trusted. Level three requires source and build platforms to warranty auditability of the source code and the integrity of the provenance. This level provides protection against threats that target the build process. Level four requires two-person code review and hermetic reproducible builds. Salsa level four provides great confidence that the software has not been tampered with. Understanding the software supply chain, generating provenance, and achieving Salsa compliance has been a goal for Dart and Flutter since the beginning of 2022. Our efforts have been grouped in two different areas. The first one is to protect the Flutter SDK software supply chain, making it Salsa compliant. And this is the area where we have had the most progress targeting product-wise Salsa level two compliance by mid 2023. The second area is create tooling to help the Flutter ecosystem improve their software supply chain. To bring all the expertise accumulated during the Salsa compliance journey to the Flutter community. Let's take a look at a simplified view of the Flutter SDK components, their integration points, and the Salsa level being targeted by the first quarter of 2023. The first layer is composed by code landing in the Dart repositories, which is used to build a Dart SDK. And the Dart SDK is targeting Salsa level two. The second layer is composed by code landing in the Flutter engine repository, which is used to build all the rendering engine artifacts. Flutter engine is also targeting Salsa level two. The first integration point incorporates Dart SDK into the Flutter engine. The third layer includes the Flutter framework repository, and this one is also targeting Salsa level two. The second integration point incorporates the engine into the Flutter framework. And the last step in the integration process is the execution of the release workflows. These workflows use the Flutter framework source code, the engine binaries, and the Dart SDK to create the Flutter SDK release bundles. These are the zip files published in the Flutter.dev website. This layer is also targeting Salsa level two. And to simplify the communication of the Salsa compliant levels to the Flutter community, rather than reporting a level per component, we'll be reporting a single product compliance level. For example, a Flutter product Salsa level two compliance means that all the components are at least Salsa level two compliant. With this, I'll pass the presentation to Alexander Thomas to go through more details of the Salsa compliance implementation and the tools and services to help protect the software supply chain or the Flutter ecosystem. Hi, my name is Alexander Thomas. I work on Dart Engineering Productivity. The Dart and Flutter SDKs are built using over 100 third-party dependencies, and then they become another in the supply chain for millions of applications. Vulnerabilities could impact millions of users and reduce trust in the Dart and Flutter ecosystem. So we want a secure Flutter SDK, and Flutter contains Dart, so the Dart SDK needs to be just as secure. So how do we do that? We picked the Salsa framework to structure our supply chain security work because it gives us concrete goals. So what does it mean to apply Salsa to Flutter and Dart? Initially, we covered some of the basics. We create 
a secure infrastructure built on top of tooling created for the Chromium project to release our SDKs. We invested in release automation to improve the quality and security of our releases. This automation allowed us to gate administrator access with multi-party approval. That means that individuals no longer have administrative access unless they get it approved by someone else. Administrative access is audited and limited in time. An example of an action that needs administrative access could be manually deleting a corrupted release archive. Finally, we generate something called provenance in the SALSA framework. This provenance contains metadata that allows you to check that the release really comes from us. Furthermore, it includes a bill of materials. That's a list of other software we use to create the release. This information can be wired up with a vulnerability database to find vulnerabilities that potentially affect the given SDK release. These and other efforts will get our SDKs to SALSA level two and enable us to reach higher levels down the road. So we improved SDK security, but that's not all we're doing to improve your supply chain security. A Dart or Flat application not only depends on the SDKs, but also on packages from the pub ecosystem. Let me highlight our efforts to make the ecosystem safer. We started this work already in Dart 215. We enabled pub to detect credentials most commonly leaked when publishing packages. In this example, you can see the pub CLI failing a published command because the package contains a private key. Together with GitHub, we launched dependabot support for the pub ecosystem. Keeping your dependencies up to date is a pretty good strategy to avoid security vulnerabilities from outdated dependencies. Dependabot also enables a nice dependency graph UI on GitHub. Dependabot can also alert when you are affected by vulnerabilities. These alerts are based on GitHub's advisory database, which recently started to support the pub ecosystem. In the future, the pub client will be made aware of these advisories so that you'll get vulnerability alerts also on the command line. In Dart 219, pub started to add content hashes to your pubspec log files. Pub get will check these hashes when past the dash dash enforce log file option. This will ensure that content downloaded by pub is the same content that was used to create the log file. This is particularly relevant if you use a mirror. Because pub stores the hashes in the pubspec log file, reviewers can notice unexpected changes. Automated publishing is our latest improvement. Automated publishing makes publishing safer. Fewer people need publish rights than before, and pub publish always runs in a clean checkout. No more stray files that get published by accident. To enable this, you have to configure a repository for your package and pub.dev. Only GitHub Actions running in that repository will be able to publish the package. Other repositories, such as Forks, will not be able to publish your package. Next, you have to configure a tag pattern. This pattern will allow pub to compare the version in the pubspec YAML to the tagging event that triggered the GitHub Action. That means that to publish using GitHub Actions, you need to tag your version. The tag needs to match the pattern configured in, on pub.dev and the version part of the tag needs to match what is in your pubspec YAML. This is a minimal example of what this looks like in GitHub Actions. The action is triggered by tag push events and has permissions to request an ID token that pub uses to authorize the publish action. Finally, the action publishes to pub.dev, accepting all prompts with dash dash force. To trigger the action, uh, create a tag or release and push it to the repo. The action runs and publishes a new version of the package automatically. Check out the documentation for more advanced workflows with multi-party approval and other CI providers than GitHub Actions. Thanks for watching.